believe that we've managed to wrangle this, but sitting next to me is Martin Phillips from The Chills. And we were floating in a space capsule I look at you And perhaps you'll smile at me Which is a great way to start off um, Queenstown's appreciation for New Zealand Music Month Which has just started actually Just started Just started Yeah, I missed it So <laughs> So just to give a bit of a backlog of the chills, they were part of that movement of that early Dunedin punk rocky sound of the 80s and they're also the most popular band of this label which is Flying Nun Records. And so my first question actually refers to this, did Flying Nun make the chills or did the chills make Flying Nun a household name? Oh, okay, well we were kind of like the flagship for the label in terms of being overseas. Everywhere we went in Europe and the States we'd mention all the other flying nun bands who were probably coming over soon. So that really helped the label. But um, these days the label in its own right is probably more well known than any of the bands on it. Mm. Just as kind of like a iconic worldwide indie label. You know, yeah. it's, got, it's got an amazing reputation. Yeah, and so um, was there a time in amongst that era an epiphany where you're just like the scene that I'm in, the music that I'm making is making a big impact on New Zealand music history. Like, was there was there an epiphany at, at um, any point? I think I knew early on that something special was happening but I didn't realise that it actually stacked up really well against overseas stuff until we got um, overseas started seeing our favourite bands and realising they're no, they're no better than what's going on at home. You, know, yeah. you just didn't expect that. You expect they'd be somehow just. Um, it was really exciting. Suddenly so realised we're part of, we're actually part of this music scene that we really admire. You know? Yeah, it was good. Yeah. yeah. So, so a, a good artist copies a great artist steals. Who are the influences? Some of us make up original stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, it's said a lot, like the Velvet Underground and the mm. Beatles and. You know, this more song-oriented bands of the 60s were important, but there's also um, some of the, what's you know, now called kraut rock, all the bands like Can and yeah. Kraftwerk and stuff. There was a big interest in that, and it all comes through the kind of punk thing. Or, mm. And it was, it was very much a kind of a do-it-yourself ethos post-punk kind of thing. Everyone did their own artwork, their own posters, yeah. promoted their own gigs. Um, you know, got a bit, it did get a wee bit kind of like black juicy back to the audience. Ooh, you know, you come to hear the music, we're not putting on a show. <laughs> but, you know, I think most people realise, no, these people are coming here to have a good time as well. So, you know, it's, but um, we had no interest in being part of mainstream music, which, you know, in the 80s, it may kind of look good from a distance, some of that stuff, but it was appalling to be around at the time because it was, you know, we were not allowed on the radio in New Zealand, and they went to they went to great lengths to stop New Zealand music getting put on the radio. So when did the New Zealand media, you know, let you in? Well, the real fight got going sort of late eighties. It was during the during the nineties that they started kind of grudging allowing like Big Rumble and people like that. You know, and they started realising actually these are hits, these are world class hits. Um, and now they don't like to talk about much. So my boss was a big fan of you guys back in the day. He was um, there for the breakthrough in Dunedin and he actually brought a single. <laughs> Tell me about the nostalgia factor of okay. this. <laughs> yep. Well that was our first proper 7 inch single. Yeah. It's it's our second release because our first one was part of the Dunedin double EP where we had three songs. Mm. But this was you know the first time we actually held in our hand the physical thing. Which is it is a special thing because it's like music that's been in your head and it's been with audience and shared and then finally there it is captured for the ages which doesn't, doesn't seem much now because you can do it all the time but um yeah this he hasn't played it very much <laughs> he still wants you to sign it yeah. <laughs> um, no, it's a, i love that first track but um yeah well that's that's still really good yeah and of course that's that's martin called the drummer who died of leukemia um, pretty much as this record was actually being released, was, um, we managed to get him copies of it and mm. um, within a few months he was dead actually, so because um, he played on this and then my sister left Auckland and went back to Leeds and so there were three of us, yeah. so we thought well what can we record and we thought well was that, there's that new one, Pink Frost, so we have got recording there. And 
so we did. And um, it didn't get released for two years until yeah. we were waiting for Martin to hopefully get better. Did you change the name as well? You changed the name of the band. Yeah. Um, around that time. Yeah, I just sort of thought, at first, at first I thought it was going to be disrespectful to call it the Chills without Martin Ball. Mm. Then everyone kept calling us the Chills anyway. Yeah. And we realised, well, it's probably what he would have wanted anyway. This, like, he contributed to make this, you know, to establish the name as a quality thing. Why, why suddenly drop it? Let's talk about the band of Merriman that you've um, sourced for this vigorous and far-reaching tour. So who have you, who have you got in the mix? Well, okay, to put this misconception to bed once and for all, this band has been with me for nearly 20 years in some case. Shit! The um, <laughs> Todd on drums and James on bass joined me in 1999. Yeah. Um, Erica, who's not here, she just had a baby, plays violin, keyboards, guitar. She's about probably 15 years, and Ollie, who's the other keyboardist, she's filling in for her as well, mm. is getting on for about 10 years as well. So it's been a solid band yeah. with no changes for at least 10 years. But the whole idea of me picking up these musicians, it's, it's so not true anymore. Yeah. Well, Martin, thank you so much for sitting down with me, and it's it's so awesome to have you here in Queenstown and to have you playing tonight. Cool. That's yeah. always, it's always good coming back here. I, I mean, this, I've spent most of my serious rock songwriting stuff in and around, you know, sort of lakes and sea Yeah. We're really looking for this group. Thank you so much. Like this. Yeah. Yeah. How you came up with the name? Was it because the needle's cold? <laughs> I, I, I'd love to say it was more interesting than that, but basically... <laughs> yeah, it's I, I was, was cold. <laughs> I, I was sitting by a window and I'm looking like, ooh, there's a, a draft there. And I thought, the draft? Great band name. <laughs> I actually did. I sat there thinking, the draft, that's the really draft. good. Like, yeah. And then I thought, no, no, that's not very good. It sounds like draft beer. <laughs>